Hello everyone. So now we can wander around however far, however far we want. It's time to make our world a little bit more polished. Now if some of you have been making biomes, I'm sure that some of you have realized that you can make some pretty decent biomes. But right now our method of choosing biomes is based around the idea of concentric circles. So if I have five biomes, then they'll always be ordered in rings, where biome 0 is on the outside, and then there's biome 1, then there's biome 2, then there's biome 3, and then at the center there's biome 4. Um, and that's because our way of choosing biomes is to simply look at the noise field, which has blobs ranging from 0 to 1. They're basically, you get these spheres in the noise field, and in turn you get spheres in your biomes. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a, uh, a more uh, robust method by having two uh, factors rather than only one. So we're going to go over into scripts and we're going to open up our um, I think we want to open our biome script for starters. This is the first take so pardon me if it's uh, mumbly. Alright, so we don't need any of these today, but we do need this biome. Um, oh, that's for a specific biome, that's fine. Uh, here in chunk, get theoretical byte. Um, and then here we get the biome by saying biome equals current world dot biomes biome index. So here is the thing we do. As you can see, we just take a cluster value, which is an arbitrary uh, point on the noise field, and we multiply it by the length of our biome list, which just gives us an arbitrary index, and as I said, it produces concentric biomes. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to have two separate um, uh, biome values. So instead of having a cluster value, we're going to have float. Now if you're going to be doing uh, landforms uh, where you have you know, a world, you might use something like rockiness and uh, moisture. Uh, I'm not actually going to be using any moisture because we're on an alien world, but you know I'm going to go ahead and implement it like that anyway, just because that way it'll be best for everyone. So we take this value, moisture, and blah 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 blah. I think it's clicking here. Hold on. My microphone was missed misbehaving a little bit there. So then we do float uh, any uh, anything else, what was it, uh, rockiness? So we have a couple of options as to what we want to do with uh, offsets. Um, right now we have uh, offset 2 and offset 2, but you notice we only pass in a couple of offsets. But you know that's fine, because all we really need to do is multiply this offset by a different value. Uh, so actually this one will be 0.2 and this one will be 0.15 and that means that uh, our moisture, um, how about 0 0.08 there we are. our moisture will change slower than our rockiness we can switch that if we don't like it like that and then we say uh, uh, we wanted to get the biomes that they, we want to get the perfect biome so we want to ask the biomes for their bids and we basically want the world to tell us what biome we should be using. So we'll do world dot get world dot get ideal biome moisture rockiness. There we go. We don't need these anymore. Just comment them out. But of, cor of course this doesn't exist. Uh, it's not a function that exists. So let's go ahead and build it. So this is a static function. There you go. So float best bid equals zero for int a equals zero. A is less than world dot biomes dot count. Nope, biomes dot length. There we are. A plus plus uh, float bid equals current world dot biomes a dot bid moisture rockiness if bid is greater than best bid best bid equals bid
we're going to go ahead and set it to default to whatever the first biome on our list is. There we are. Now, of course, this function doesn't exist. So that's easy enough. What we need to do is we need to have a value here for each of those. So we'll go ahead and set those to be default to zero. Uh, float delta equals moisture minus ideal moisture. Plus mathf.abs um, rockiness minus ideal rockiness. Return negative. Uh, return 100 divided by delta. That'll do. And that's a very simple way to do it. We basically say, actually, hold on. Now that I'm thinking about it. Delta is going to be between zero and two, so um, it's actually never going to be. It's very unlikely to be zero. But let's go ahead and say. That way we won't ever get extraordinarily high values. Um, this is a very simple way to make the bidding work. But in order to do that, we need to set our biomes up to have an available bid. That happens here on the main camera. Here you can see our biomes where we got flatlands. But you can see it didn't take. And the reason it didn't take is because we have the wrong protection level on bid. This needs to be... World.get ideal biome is that was kind of stupid. All right, well we need to set that up to have a um, to have these. So the flatlands are fine with ideal moisture of zero and ideal rockiness of zero. Let's have our painted desert have an ideal rockiness of 0.8. Now we should find that nearly everything in the world is flatlands. Uh, which means it's going to have patches of dirty ice. But we're going to have very rarely uh, the um, uh, the river floor and the boulder. So our our dirt here, you can see this is uh, this is the flatlands. But here you can see we have some. Let's go ahead and make it so that I can tell what the hell's going on a little bit easier. Uh, our dirty ice. Let's go ahead and make it so that the brick isn't dirty ice, but is instead sand. And that'll make it real clear. Um, because anytime we see ice, and we'll make this granite into dirty ice, there. So now we can tell the difference. A painted desert is made of ice, and the flatlands aren't. So you can see that we have little patches of biome here and there, um, and that's due to the fact that we are in fact changing our um, biome levels very quickly. Now we can go and make them change even slower. 0.2 is actually a fairly high value. So let's go ahead and make that move even slower. Um, over in, is it world? No, it's in chunk. There it is. So 0 0.02, let's go ahead and make that 0 0.08 and we'll go ahead and make this one 0 0.03. There we are. Now our biomes cover significantly more land. And you can see that we have our, um, here's our painted desert with the two kinds of ice. This doesn't look like ice, but it's dirty ice. Uh, and then we got large amounts of flat land with its uh, sand and rock, uh, sand and dirt. So you can see that we have a steadily varying set of biomes. But even this, the biome still might be a little bit too big. And we may want to go for even slower biomes. We just keep reducing that value until we're happy with how large the biomes are. Um, but we have to keep in mind that we're going to be adding more biomes in, which means they're going to be changing more often. So I'm aiming for a really, really flat set of biomes. There we are. That's, that's more like it. I want to have an extensive um, set of biomes. Where I want to have an extensive biome. I don't want to have little patches of biome. And you can see that's exactly what we've got. And you can see that the boundaries are nice and arbitrary. Um, they're not, you know, they're not strictly chopped up 
uh, by chunk or anything like that. They nicely wrap into each other with a kind of graceful visual. So let's go ahead and create another biome. And we will call this one... Um, uh, we'll go ahead and change this one from Painted Desert to Ice uh, Iceland because we just changed it over to be ice. So we're going to change this one to Painted Desert. And so here, we're going to have our ideal moisture be 1 and our ideal rockiness be 0.1. And here, we're going to have the same thing that we had before, like this. Um, so our mountain power, we can make that into 1. And we're going to go ahead and um, make it so that these aren't the same bricks. We're going to have this one be rust and this one be dark stone. Okay? So we're going to call this rust, wrist, dark stone. Now, one of the things you might remember is we have these conditions which are very blank, ground level and above ground level. That's what we're going to be changing in the next episode. I'll be really amping those up so we can get some very nice formations, um, and that'll be fun. Here you can see that these uh, are the painted desert, these floating mountains, because I changed the mountain power. But let's go over there. You can see that our ground has the rust, the red rust. So what do you think? Biomes are starting to shape up. In the next episode, we're going to make them have, um, we're going to make them make sense. Uh, by using much more powerful um, uh, conditional elements rather than the simple above ground, below ground bullshit that I have right now. Uh, and after that, I'm not sure that I will be teaching you how to do trees, but once your biomes are configured, you can do trees and stuff like that pretty easily. Um, I'll be doing things like building placement, but that'll, that's still a ways out. Anyhow, next episode, I hope you look forward to really refining our biomes. Um, and getting some good-looking stuff going on. That's it. And just as a reminder, since we're now cropping, we've only got a few chunks in our active memory. That's not where the player is. The player is here. Alright, thank you. Bye.